Hi guys, Ryu here from Blender Bros and welcome to short compositing tutorial series in which I'm gonna teach you how to create this awesome sci-fi desert scene. Let's get started. So before we begin, uh, you need to know a few things and download a few resources. So first of all, I'm using Blender 3D as a 3D application. You can get it for free from blender.org. And I'm going to be using Photoshop for editing. Also, I'll be using a few Photoshop plugins. But if you don't have them, there is a way around it. Although I would highly recommend getting them if you are serious about editing your images. Next, I'm going to be using Mixamo website by Adobe, which is a free resource for anyone who has an Adobe account. You can log in and use it and it will allow you to create animations or poses for 3D characters in AOT pose, which is how I'm going to teach you how to create this kind of a walk-in person in the middle of a desert. Then I'm going to be using Wacom tablet for editing, but you don't really need it. You can use mouse, no problem. So the portrait or sculpting, so you should be fine with the mouse. Now, resources that you're going to need. Uh, first of all, you will need to download this uh, model of this ship and the model of this telecom tower, which is something I've modeled and uh, I'm going to provide you with a file. And also uh, you will need an image of this big ship in the background. Uh, that's from our Blender Bros course, Ultimate Guide to Hard Ops and Box Cutter. Now you don't need a model for that. You just need a PNG or TIFF. So I'm going to give you a TIFF. Then you're going to need a planet, uh, also a displacement model for the terrain and the kind of like a tiny here you can see these dunes in the back that's from a stock image of a desert you're gonna need that too and of course the figure uh, of a human or a robot so i'm gonna provide you links to all of these resources so make sure you're gonna download them um, before we start and because we're gonna be using all of them in this tutorial so that's it for the intro and i think we can start so uh, once you download blender and install it you're going to open it and you'll probably see some different UI than mine. But what you can do is go to my YouTube channel and watch the video on how to set up UI for Blender. Uh, there's no point of me spending 20 minutes here and wasting your time. You can just watch these videos outside this tutorial and learn how to set all of these menus uh, that you're going to need, including render settings. So I'm not going to be going into that. Although I'm going to be showing you in depth what I'm going to be changing or adding, etc. in compositor, you know, render settings and so on and so forth. So we're going to be going very detailed on that, but the UI is something you should be looking into outside of this tutorial. Secondly, I'm going to be using a few add-ons which are free. I'm going to be using machine tools, uh, which you can download from Gumroad. And there is, um, I have two videos on machine tools on my channel. They're very in-depth, one hour each. Go ahead and watch it if you want to. But I will give you a few tips on how to use the basic tools over there. So you, and you don't really need that. But I'm using that also. I'm using PowerSafe, which is helping me to uh, save files in intervals automatically. So when I'm, you know, when my Blender crashes, I'm not losing any work. Power safe you can get for free from Gumroad as well. So all the links to all the resources, all the add-ons, everything is in the video description. So go ahead and download it and you're going to be good to go. Now, lastly, uh, this tutorial is going to be split into a few videos. Uh, we're going to be first creating the scene, then we're going to be rendering. We're going to be also creating the character in Mixamo, the animation, and then we're going to be post-processing. So I'm assuming it's going to be about four parts uh, for this uh, tutorial. So let's start, guys. Uh, so first of all, what you need to do is you need to add a plane. Uh, There's going to be our foreground, so a plane. And we're going to scale it by 30. So S30 and press Enter. Let me just enable screencast keys so you can see what I'm pressing. There you go. Now we need to subdivide this plane because when we're going to displace it, otherwise it will not work because at the moment it's just one plane. So you need to press Tab. And if you have machine tools installed, you can go to face mode and if you don't you simply press tab and press three for face in blender and you see there is only one face here we need to subdivide it so right click and subdivide it and then press shift r a few times to you know multiply that subdivision this is still going to be not enough so what we're going to do is we're going to go here to this wrench and we're going to add a modifier called subdivision surface which will uh, subdivide the surface further a little bit more deep so let's just uh up it to four and four in viewport and render and we should be good to go so now we're going to add displacement map and see how it looks okay so hover your mouse here in the corner you see that your mouse cursor will change the crosshair click and pull up and then go here and change this to shader editor now 
to be able to see any notes, we need to add material to this uh, plane. So we're going to click on mod and new. And we got this uh, kind of a setup here. Grab this material output, press G, move it in here so we have space for new notes. Shift A, and we're going to add two notes. One of them is going to be displacement. Okay, so this one. And Shift A, and we're going to add image texture. Okay, image texture. Boom. Connect color to height and displacement to displacement. And now we're going to load in textures that you downloaded from ArtStation because the displacement textures you have to download from ArtStation. So we're going to click here on this folder and you have to navigate to a place where you download them to and you're going to install them here. OK, so let's click and here you will see that terrains folder once you unzip this download and click here and click on Canyon exports and click on Canyon A. All right. Now you will not be able to see anything because we are not in rendered view and in, uh, displacement can only be seen in, seen in cycles. So we need to here in the top switch from 3D viewport to a rendered view and make sure here that you are in cycles. OK, before we do anything, we're going to change color of this to make it look a bit more like a, you know, desertish sort of a sand. So let's just change the color here make it a bit darker and, uh, you know, this should be fine. OK, make sure that you're going to turn off this denoiser here in the viewport because it's going to slow down your viewport by a ton. And what we're going to do now is we're going to change a few settings because you can see that there is something happening, but it's extremely flat. OK, it doesn't really look like, uh, you know, like a mountain range or anything like that. So we're going to go here to the mat settings uh, on the bottom. So click on the mat and scroll down, go to settings and under displacement change from bump only to bump and displacement boom right and then we're gonna be able to see you know this kind of a canyon here now this is a little bit aggressive uh, so we can scale it down so hold shift and you can scale this down a little bit here uh, so we're gonna scale it down a little bit more let me see that uh, that's almost where i want to be a little bit more Shift basically when you hold shift is going to slow down this mouse movement. That's pretty cool. I think that's okay. And now what we're going to do, we're going to add the camera. Okay. So what I want you to do is if you installed machine tools from Gumroad, and I highly recommend you install this add-on because if you want to work with Blender, machine tools will help you with navigation and other tasks. It's an incredible add-on. I couldn't live without it. So install it, it's free. And once you do here, you can uh, enable a few options. OK, so what I want you to enable is the um, views pie, this one and enable save pie. OK, we're going to need both. All right. And simply save preferences. So simply, you know, click them on and save preferences. OK, now the views pie will enable us to add very easily camera to our environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press a uh, page down and smart come to view and now the camera is going to be added to my viewport precisely what i want it now what we're going to do is we're going to change the resolution of it to 21 by 9 you could even go wider to 23 by 9 so kind of like a really cinematic but you know um this one will do so 3 for 40 by 40 40. if you have a slower gpu i'm working on 390 rtx 390 you can maybe go a little bit lower here. So instead of 1440, go 1080p. And also what you can do is click on a plane. Now let's actually rename it. So double click here and rename it to background. You can click on that and go to the modifier and switch the levels of subdivision in viewport from four to like maybe two or even one. It's going to look a little bit more rough, but it will take less memory basically in viewport. So it's going to be a bit easier for your GPU, but keep the number high in render because when you render it, you want it to be smooth. Okay. Also to make it even smoother, what you can do is right click and shade smooth, which will help a little bit with smoothing out some of this kind of, uh, you know, rough edges. Okay. Awesome. So now let's go back to the camera. So click camera uh, on the camera and press page down again. And we're going to lock it to view. But before we do that, let's zoom in a little bit uh, so we can fill this frame with the camera page down, lock to view. And now I'm going to click on my background so I can adjust my camera according to background. And what I want to do is I want to, you know, create like a really low angle shot here, maybe a little bit closer, a little bit closer. 
zoom in and maybe somewhere here and move the move the viewport higher a bit. Now what we can do is we can actually decide, you know, what kind of angle and focal length we want to choose, right? So if I'm gonna go really low angle, I mean really low angle, kind of like shooting almost from the ground perspective, this is gonna be really cool because it's gonna imitate you standing there and actually looking at the scene, which will kind of create a bit more sort of a, not personalized, but more of intimate sort of a view. And it's gonna look really cool. I think this is a little bit still too high, so we might go a little bit lower on this elevation. So let's go back to shader editor. And let's actually drop this a bit more. So click on the background, go here to this displacement, and we can drop the scale a little bit more, okay? So maybe to like, uh, something like three, maybe 0 0.3. Now we're gonna have to move the camera back up. So page down and lock to view and hold shift and mid mouse button and move up. And I think this is gonna be a little bit better, uh, so. It's not as, you know, not as elevated. It's got a bit of room here. I think I want to angle it upwards a bit more. So lower the angle of the camera a bit more. And something like this. We could even go a wider angle here. So we could switch to something like maybe 40 millimeters. So pitch down and switch to something like 40, which will um, give us a little bit of a wider view. Um, could be interesting. So it's sometimes a little bit difficult to uh, position this because of the uh, of the feedback of cycles. Maybe something like this. Although I want to rotate it a little bit this way here to the left. I think this is kind of interesting. You know, we're gonna place this plane here, this ship. The person is gonna be working on this area. There's gonna be the tower. It's gonna be the sun and this passing massive vehicle and this ship. So I think this should be good. Maybe a little bit higher, something like this, something like that. This can be removed in Photoshop, don't worry about that. Uh, the most important part here are these elements. So this part here is going to be offsetting these ridges and this plane is gonna be offset by the uh, sun, this hill and the comb tower and the person is going to be in the middle frame by everything. So framing is really important and it's good to, you know, kind of frame a shot first and then start putting stuff in your, in your frame. So this is cool. Now let's save this because we don't want to lose that. So let's go here, save us, and we're going to save it here and we're going to name it course one, all right, blender and save. Now I'm going to run power save, which is a free add-on and it allows you to save in intervals. Go ahead and download from Gamrot if you want to. If you don't want to, that's fine. I'm using power save because I really like it. I have videos on that, how to use it. And also there's a video on uh, the creator's website, how to use it on Gamrot. So you can learn how to do that. It's very easy. All right. So now it's time to start importing stuff into this image. But before we do that, we need to add some light. So now here, let's switch from object to world. And this is going to be our Azure eye setup, but we're not going to be using Azure eye. So don't worry about that. Uh, you can dis disregard these nodes. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to first add a light here, shift A and add a sun. So add a sun and don't worry about the position of the sun. It doesn't matter. We're going to be uh, setting it according to sky texture. So what I want you to do is go here to world. And you see that I have an abandoned slipway HDRI plugged in, but it's because it's plugged in here through these nodes. Normally, you're gonna see something like this. So probably gonna be black, okay? And that's about it. What you wanna do here is click on that and add the sky texture, okay? And then uh, what you wanna do is go here to preferences under edit, go to add-ons and type sun. Then click on this box and save preferences to add this blender add-on called sun position. Now what we're going to do is scroll down here in world settings and go to sun position. And we're going to add sun to sun and sky texture to sky texture. And they're going to get unified and sort of act together, okay, which is really important. Now what we're going to do, change the sun size to three and we're going to move it to position. But before we do that, I need to enable visibility of the sky texture in my viewport because it's disabled. So I go to render settings here, go to film and turn off this transparency. Now you can see there is a sky. 
So let's go back to world and what we're going to do is we're going to first of all drop the sun elevation really low, okay? We want to have it, you know, above the horizon but not too not too high. Now you can enable disable sun disk, we want a sun disk uh, for sure. And we want to move this sun disk a little bit to the right. So sun rotation and move it somewhere here, okay? Uh, maybe here. We're going to make it a bit bigger, uh, okay? So something like this and maybe elevate it a little bit higher. So somewhere here. And now we need to change sun intensity to 0 0.3, okay? Uh, maybe even lower, maybe 0 0.25. Actually 0. Point, actually that's fine. Now cool, so here we can in uh, increase the dust. We can also increase ozone layer. It's gonna give us kind of like a bluish tint. And we're going to pump some air. So we're gonna really make it kind of a sunsetish, right? Texture is really reflective. It looks more like a water, like a wet sand. So click on the background, uh, scroll down here to the material settings and simply increase the roughness to, you know, kind of a higher value, which will fix our sand problem. Now it starts looking like a dune, right? Cool. Now let's go back here to world settings. So what we're going to do is click on the sun texture plus HDRI and we're going to make sure that here, instead of environmental texture, we're going to have sky texture, okay? And we're good to go. So now we have our sun kind of set and, you know, our um, our scene is good to go. So what we need to do now is we need to start importing our models. So let's collapse this because we're not going to use this for the time being. OK, let's zoom it in here and we can start importing models. So now save your file here or simply click on power save. And uh, for now, this would be it. And we're going to continue in next video. Thanks so much for watching. See you soon.